بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ہوپ یو آر ڈوئنگ ویل ویلکم ٹو دی سکس لیکچر آف یور کورس ٹریننگ اینڈ ڈیولپمنٹ آز یو ووڈ ریمبر دیٹ وی ور ڈسکسنگ اسٹریٹجک ٹریننگ اینڈ ود ان دیٹ وی ور ڈسکسنگ دا اسٹریٹجک ٹریننگ اینڈ ڈیولپمنٹ پروسیس یو ووڈ ریمبر دیٹ آئی ٹول یو دیٹ the process of training and development it starts with the business strategy it should come out of the business strategy it should be linked with the organizational goals and the final step of this process is that you have to evaluate the training effectiveness so today we are going to discuss the importance of evaluation of training effectiveness and the second thing that we are going to discuss are the organizational characteristics that influence the setup of training in an organization so let's start with discussing what is the importance of evaluation what is the importance of matrix that are used to evaluate the effectiveness of training in an organization یہ تو آپ جانتے ہی ہیں کہ کسی بھی کام کو جو کہ کسی پرپز کے لیے کیا جائے اس کے آؤٹ کم کو میجر کرنا اس پروسیس کا ایک سب سے امپورٹنٹ پارٹ ہوتا ہے سو آپ نے کوئی بھی کام کرنا ہے تو اس کا فائدہ کیا ہوا اس کا آؤٹ کم کیا نکلا یہ دیکھنا ایک بہت ضروری عمل ہے اس سارے پروسیس کے اندر اسی طرح ٹریننگ اینڈ ڈیولپمنٹ کے پروسیس میں بھی ٹریننگ کی ایویلویشن ایک بہت ضروری اور ایک بہت امپورٹنٹ عمل ہے ٹریننگ اور ڈیولپمنٹ کے پروسیس کو ڈیزائن کرنے کا اور امپلیمنٹ کرنے کے لیے میٹرکس آر دوز میجرز دیٹ آر یوز ٹو ایویلویٹ دا ٹریننگ افیکٹیونیس دا افیکٹیونیس آف ٹریننگ از ناٹ always only related to financial outcomes or cost and benefit analysis it is not only related to how much was spent and how much does it contribute to earning of an organization because training is related to the development of the employees and training is related to changing the attitudes and behaviors of the employees and it is also related to developing them to be able to grow so the metrics that are involved to evaluate the process of training are not just financial metrics but also other metrics that are meaningful to the process of training or to the objectives of training so there can be several objectives of training for example if you have organized a training session that helps employees learn about quality control so the objective of this training session is to help them improve the quality of the project uh, of the products and reduce errors کہ کوالٹی جو ہے پروڈکٹ کی وہ امپروو کی جائے اور اس کے پروسیس میں اتنی امپروومنٹ لے کے آئی جائے کہ ایرر جو ہیں وہ اس پروسیس میں کم سے کم ہوتے جائیں سو فار ایگزامپل ایون ایف یو جسٹ آرڈر اے میل فرام اے ریسٹورینٹ اینڈ ایف دیٹ میل از ناٹ اکارڈنگ ٹو اسپیسیفکیشن وہ آپ کے پاس جب گھر پہنچتا ہے تو وہ وہ آرڈر نہیں ہے جو کہ آپ نے آرڈر کیا تھا تو یہ ایک ایرر ہے سو یہ ڈسٹریبیوشن ایرر جو ہے اس کو ریڈیوس کرنے کے لیے امپلائیز کو ٹریننگ دینے کی ضرورت ہے کہ جب وہ آرڈر لیں اور آرڈر جو ہے وہ جب ایگزیکیوٹ ہو تو وہ وہی آرڈر ایگزیکیوٹ ہو جو کہ آرڈر دیا گیا تھا اسی طرح بہت سارے کوالٹی کنٹرول کے آسپیکٹس ہوتے ہیں جن کو ریڈیوس کرنے کے لیے کوالٹی کنٹرول کی ٹریننگ دی جاتی ہے سو جب کوالٹی کنٹرول کی ٹریننگ دی جائے گی تو اس کی افیکٹیونیس کو میجر کرنے کے لیے آپ کیا میجر کریں گے کیا دیکھیں گے وٹ وڈ بی دا میٹرکس دیٹ وڈ شو دیٹ دس ٹریننگ واز افیکٹیو سو اف یور ایرر ان دا پروڈکشن پروسیس اور ڈیلیوری پروسیس 
they reduce, that means that your training was effective. There are three levels on which training is analyzed or should be analyzed after any training effort that has been taken place in an organization. The first level is whether the employees have been satisfied from the training process. Kya employees jinko training di gai hai, wo training ke process is satisfied hai? Was it easy to understand? Was the material understandable? Do they think that it is related to their performance Im improvement? Do they consider it as an important uh, process that they should have undergone through? So what is the satisfaction of the employees out of the training process? That is the first thing that should be measured. The second level of analysis is that has there been any change in the abilities, skills, attitudes, or behaviors of the employees that was required out of the training? So, koi change aya hai, jo change required tha. So, if a skill was required to be developed in the employees, has that skill been developed in them? Or if a behavior change was required in the employees, has the behavior actually changed? So, that is the second level, ke jo change required tha, wo change aya hai ke nahi. And the third level of analysis is that whether the change that has taken place, does it lead to any business-related outcomes or not? So, the change that takes place must be related to business-related outcomes. Well, here I am not saying that it leads to financial outcomes, but business-related outcomes. These business-related outcomes, they are obviously related to the objectives of the training. There should be a close link between the objectives of the training and the business-related outcomes that were required out of the training. For example, if the training was conducted to make employees feel more engaged with their work, has it resulted in higher employee engagement or employee commitment? Or if the training was organized to reduce the turnover of the employees, has the turnover actually reduced? So, has there been any business-related outcomes that have taken place out of the process of training? So, the business-related outcomes that can be measured as an outcome of training, the examples are that has there been any uh, improvement in employee engagement or commitment? Has there been any improvement in employee turnover? Has, in, has there been any improvement in or reduction in the number of defects in product delivery or product design? Has there been any increase in the number of new products that have been developed in the organization? Has there been any reduction in the time of new product development? Or another business-related outcome of a training process is that has there been any reduction in time in filling managerial position in the organization. Now, you will ask that what is the managerial positions that you fill in the training? Se kya hai? So, managerial positions, you will ask that what is the easiest way and what is the easiest way from the organization that you will fill up. So, it means that you are investing the right resources in the developmental process. That's why managers and uh, employees, they are, evel they, they are available to take over the positions, the managerial positions that become vacant in your organization and you don't have to go on, go on searching and searching within your organization and, or outside your organization. So that means that the developmental process, the career development process or the succession planning process in your organization that is effective and your managerial positions are filled in a shortened period of time. So that is also a business-related outcome that your managerial positions, they don't stay vacant for a very long time. So all these kind of metrics may be analyzed in order to see the effectiveness of training. The effectiveness of training is very important for the organization 
and as well as for the trainers and the training consultants as well because that is something that brings meaning to the work that they are doing so if you in the future are going to become a trainer or a training consultant this is something the metrics or the outcomes that are business related these are the things that will make your work meaningful ki aap logon ko bata sake aap managers ko convince kar sake ki agar aap ye training karwayenge to iska ye fayda aapki organization ko hoga so this is very important for the trainers and training consultants to know that what business related outcomes are possible out of a particular training program so this is what gives meaning to your work if you are going to become a training consultant or a trainer in the future okay so organizations they have realized out of their process of evolution that financial performance is not the only outcome or the only measurable performance of the organization so what they are using in current situation in current organizational con uh, context is not just a financial performance or the dividends earned by the shareholders but a balanced scorecard that analyzes an organizational performance from a number of perspectives so a balanced scorecard may also be used to analyze the effectiveness of a training program so a balanced scorecard is a means of performance measurement that provides managers with a chance to look at the overall company performance or the performance of departments or functions from the perspective of internal and external customers employees and shareholders from this definition you can easily see that the organizational performance is measured from a number of perspectives so it's not only measured from the perspective of the shareholder but all the stakeholders all the internal customers the external customers as well as the employees and finally the shareholders so there are four perspectives of analyzing an organizational performance from four aspects so these perspectives are from the perspective of the customer from the perspective of the internal processes from the perspective of innovation and learning and finally the financial perspective so financial perspective is only just one part of all the perspectives that are used to develop this balanced scorecard so from the perspective of customer means how much your customers are satisfied how much they are brand loyal from the perspective of internal processes means how much quality is there in in your processes of your organization how much errors they take place how much defects they take place and how smooth and fluent your processes are of your organization and from the perspective of learning and innovation that means that how much you are improving your products how much new products you are bringing into the marketplace and how effectively your employees are learning and growing in your organization and finally is the financial perspective that how much actually in figures or in numbers your organization is earning from how much it is spending so when you look at the training function from all these perspective the customers of training they are the employees that that get the training and the customers are also that can also be a perspective that how much customers are satisfied after the training is given to your customer service employees or how much customer satisfaction overall has improved as a result of the training from the perspective of internal processes how much has there been improvement in the internal process of processes of your organization for example ingersoll rand is an american organization it is a corporation that sells diversified products uh, industrial products to various different customers 
they have offered a performance improvement training program, a training workshop that was related to Lean Six Sigma. Six Sigma is, you must be knowing that, that that is a quality control process through which quality of the product is improved so that defects are reduced. So Lean Six Sigma is also a type of Six Sigma quality control. So they have, they gave this training to their employees in Lean Six Sigma of quality control. And the outcome that they measured of this quality control training workshop was that there were hundreds of thousands of dollars saved by reducing vendor delivery costs by 76%. So this is a metric that they have used to evaluate that the, tra the vendor delivery costs, they reduced by 76%. And that led to a saving of hundreds of thousands of dollars. So this is how the effectiveness of training of a particular training program may be measured and should be measured that links to the objectives of the training, which must be linked to the business strategy of an organization. Now we are going to discuss the various organizational characteristics that influence the setup of training in an organization. By setup of training, I mean to say that the various aspects of training, like how much training is organized, where it is organized, what type of employees are trained, how much is invested in, in the training function of an organization, all these things, they are influenced by the organizational characteristics. Aapki organization kis tarah se organized hai? Aapki organization ka structure kya hai? Vahaan pe top management ka vision kya hai? Unki global presence kya hai? Unke business units kitne integrated hai? Aur unki baaki human resource strategies wo kya hai? Ye sab cheezen aapke training or development function ko influence karti hai. So hum one by one, in characteristics ko examine karenge, explore karenge, aur dekhenge ke training ke function ke upar inka kya effect hota. So, pehli cheez jo ke aapke training or development ke function ko effect karti hai, wo ye hai ke aapke employees or managers kya role perform karte hai aapki organization mein. What are the roles of your employees and managers in your organization? As you know that we had discussed that traditionally or a few decades ago, the managers were required to command and control the employees and the organization. But now, with the changing environment, with the changing business context, with more innovation and learning required at every level of the organization, the managers have to become facilitators of the people of the organization. So rather than commanding and controlling the people of their organization, they have to facilitate them to come up with new ideas, to come up with innovation and to take initiatives themselves. So a traditional organization, a traditional organization in which the organization is structured in a traditional way, the role of the managers in such an organization, there are several roles of a manager in a traditional organization. Usme traditional organization mein manager ke kya role hota hai? Ek to ye ke individual performance ko manage karna. देखना कि लोग कितना परफॉर्म कर रहे हैं क्या वो रिक्वायरमेंट के मुताबिक है और फिर अगर नहीं है तो उनको मोटिवेट करना कि वो अपनी परफॉर्मेंस इंप्रूव करें और एक सर्टेन लेवल तक लेकर आएं 
या अगर उनको उनकी स्किल्स डेफिशिएंट हैं तो उनको ट्रेनिंग प्रोवाइड की जाए कि वो अपनी परफॉर्मेंस को इम्प्रूव करके एक सर्टन लेवल के ऊपर लेकर आए वो परफॉर्मेंस जो कि मैनेजर स्पेसिफाई करेगा कि एक एम्प्लॉय को इतना परफॉर्म करना चाहिए सो अ मैनेजर इन अ ट्रेडिशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैज टू मैनेज परफॉर्मेंस द सेकेंड थिंग इज दैट द मैनेजर हैज टू डिवेलप द एम्प्लॉयज सो इट इज द मैनेजर हु हैज टू टेक द इनिशिएटिव वट डिवेलपमेंट एन एम्प्लॉय वुड नीड उसको क्या ट्रेनिंग की जरूरत है उसको क्या डिवेलपमेंट की जरूरत है सो मैनेजर इज गोइंग टू बी द पर्सन हु डिसाइड दैट दिस पर्सन दिस एम्प्लॉय रिक्वायर्स दिस मच ऑफ ट्रेनिंग और दिस काइंड ऑफ डायरेक्शन एन अदर रोल इन अ ट्रेडिशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन अ मैनेजर हैज टू परफॉर्म इज टू प्लान एंड एलोकेट रिसोर्सेज दैट पर्सन हैज रिसोर्सेज एंड दैट हैज टू एलोकेट दैम that these resources these financial resources will go at this place these human resources will go in this place itne log is team mein kaam karenge itne log is team mein kaam karenge itna budget is team ko milega itna budget is team ko milega to manager ne allocate karne hain aur plan karne hain resources ko then manager in a traditional organization has to coordinate interdependent groups so if your team or if your group if for example you are a manager of a of the financial section of the organization if the marketing department that needs some resources to marketing department ka head jo hai wo aapke paas aayega ke ji hame ye paise chahiye marketing ke budget ke liye ye budget hame allocate kar de to jo manager hai usne interdependent groups ko coordinate karna hai so that resources that are required for your business unit or your business group are made available to your business unit then a manager has to manage group performance that the group that is under that person that is performing according to the requirements then a manager has to monitor the business environment so that person has to see how many clients how many customers there are and how to improve these customers how to improve this customer pool how to improve client relationships and so on and so forth so that person has to manage the business environment and and then scan the business environment for uh, for product opportunities for new product development for latent needs in the marketplace so that has the, the manager has to manage the business environment and finally a manager in a traditional role has to represent his or her unit so he has to be the spokesperson for his unit the spokesperson for his unit within the organization or is it if it is required outside the organization as well so these are the role that a manager needs to perform in a traditional organization these are the traditional roles of a manager in an organization you can see from from this collection of roles that all of these roles are very structured monitoring managing developing these are structured and these required the these required the skills of commanding and controlling whereas today's organizations a lot of them are now being organized as high performance work systems what are high performance work systems organizations that are organized in teams there are no hierarchies or no structures there are only teams that are organized around a particular competency for example apple is an organization that steve jobs says that is organized as a stardom he says that it's the biggest stardom stardom on this planet there is one person who is in charge of the ios software operating system there is one person in charge of the mac hardware there is one person in charge of the global marketing function there is one person in charge of the production and operations and he says that all of these team leaders they meet together for 3 hours every week and discuss about all aspects of the organization and what steve jobs does is 
that he facilitates the discussion he gives ideas to them and he list and he listens to their ideas i would like you to search on the internet about this interview it is available on the internet if you search by steve jobs talks about managing people you will find this video it is very interesting and you will see you will get a, a an impression an idea of how a high performance work system is organized so in a high performance work system there are teams there are no big structures there are no hierarchies so there are team leaders and there are team members and that's it that's the only hierarchy and the teams they are responsible for for recruiting new people for getting resources from bring, for bringing in new ideas and for all the functions that are involved around that particular competency for which the team is organized so in a high performance work system the role of the manager is not to command and control the role of the team leader is not to command and control is not to direct the role of a team leader or the role of a manager in a high performance work system shifts from being a commander to being a facilitator so if we look at the various roles that a manager performs in a high performance work system these roles are number one managing alignment there should be an alignment between the business goals and the team goals manager has to help the employees manage their objectives does not direct their objectives but manage their objectives and the manager has to scan the organizational environment for useful information that he can he or she can give to his or her team so that they can use that information for generating good ideas so managing and alignment needs to align between organizational goals and team goals another role that manager has to perform in a high performance work system is to coordinate activities not direct activities but coordinate activities and make sure that the performance of the team is according to the requirements or according to the goals that were set then this person has to facilitate the decision making process the team comes up with the idea and they have to decide whether that idea is feasible viable and the manager has to facilitate the decision making process that person has to guide the team in making the right and rational decision so the manager will not take the decision himself but facilitate the team to take the decision then a manager in a high performance work system has to facilitate continuous learning by facilitating continuous learning this person has to help employees identify the training needs so he does not have to tell them or direct them what training needs are required in in the team members he or she helps them identify ki unko kis training ki zarurat hai and then this person develops an environment that facilitates continuous learning and continuous growth and innovation so this person has to create that environment provide that environment to employees or members of his work team and finally this person has to create and maintain trust trust is the most important factor in these work teams if you will listen to that interview this is what steve jobs also points out that we have to trust that people will do their work without requiring to monitor them all the time so trust is the most important factor and it is the team leader who has to develop that trust and to maintain that trust within the group members so from all these type of roles you can easily see that all these roles 
are roles that require people's skills. So managing, coordinating, encouraging, and helping build trust, all these roles, they require people's skill. Skills that are required to communicate and connect with people. So that means that the training function of a high-performance work system has to include building people's skills, has to include making good leaders, has to include improving the communication skills of the people and helping them learn how to develop an, an environment in which learning takes place. So the implication of the roles of the managers that are being performed in an organization, whether your organization is organized in a traditional way or it is organized in a more contemporary organizational structure that will affect what kind of training your employees and managers will require in order to perform their roles effectively. The second thing that affects your training function is top management support. For anything to happen within an organization, there has to be the top management support. If the CEO and the top management, the directors of an organization, they are not committed to a particular initiative, a particular way of organizing things in the organization, then that initiative will not take place. It will not be effective. It will not lead to the outcomes. So the CEO of the organization, how much committed he or she is to the training function of the organization, that will influence how training is organized in your in your company. So the CEO or the top management, they have, to, they have to perform various roles so that the training function can be effective in the organization. What are these various roles? The top management has to provide a clear vision. What type of learning do they want the employees to have in the organization, whether they want to develop their employees, whether they want them to stick around for a long time. What is the vision of the organization? So the CEO has to communicate a clear vision of the learning function of the organization. The second role that a CEO has to perform in relation to the training function of an organization is to be the sponsor of the training function. That person needs to sponsor through financial resources, first of all. That person has to sanction financial resources for, for the training and development. And then this person has to sponsor through encouragement as well as commitment. Then this person has to act as a governor, governor that monitors and helps set the objectives of the training function. What would be the objectives of the training function? And help revise these objectives, help to develop these objectives, and help to modify these objectives. So this person has to govern the training and development function of the organization. If that person, if the CEO is not involved in taking decisions or in helping to make decisions about this aspect of the organization, it will lose its direction. Another function or role that a CEO has to perform is to be the subject matter expert. That person has to provide guidance in the subject matter, in deciding the subject matter 
of the training or development that is provided to the employees. So that person needs to be an expert or that person needs to be familiar with all the aspects of the organization for which training is being provided to the employees. So that person has to act as a subject matter expert. Then this person also has to play the role of the faculty. So a CEO is required or CEO should involve himself in providing input to the training function. Faculty means that this person goes and discusses various aspects of the training program. So, wo ja ke wahan pe lecture de ya kuch uh, learning material provide kare ya kuch online resources provide kare. The CEO has to perform this role as well. Then the CEO also has to perform the role of the learner. That person has to role model that learning is something which is the way things are done in this organization and show the enthusiasm for learning by learning himself. So this person must show that he or she is keen to learn, is enthusiastic to learn and role model this behavior in front of other employees. So if the employees will see that the CEO of the organization is so keen and ambitious about learning, they will also try to imitate that behavior, will also try to uh, develop that behavior in themselves. And finally, this person has to act as the marketing agent of the learning function of the organization. So this person has to advocate the learning function by talking about it it in speeches or in the annual reports or other public relations events. So this person has to market or promote the learning function of the organization. This that learning is something that is fostered in this place, fostered in this organization, and talk about the advantages and talk about the outcomes of the learning function of the organization. So, wo batai ke training or learning ka kya fayda hai, uska kya emphasis hai, uski organization mein kya importance hai, employees ne usse kya benefit liya hai, organization ne usse kya benefit liya hai, ye sab baate hai jab aapka CEO promote kare, jab aapka CEO uske baare mein baat kare, तो इससे ये इम्प्रेशन मिलेगा ओवरऑल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में कि लर्निंग एक ऐसा अमल है जो कि इस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में इनकरेज किया जाता है आपकी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का सीईओ इसके साथ इतना कमिटेड है सो दिस विल हेल्प मैनेजर्स एंड एम्प्लॉइज टेक इनिशिएटिव फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग लर्निंग and organizing a learning environment in the organization. So the more there is top management support for the learning function in the organization, the better learning environment is going to be created. The more the top management or the CEO is able to perform all these roles for the learning function of the organization, the better is going to be the effectiveness of the training and development function in your organization. Another aspect or another organizational characteristic that influences the training function is the level of integration of your business units. If you are, your business units are integrated into each other, if information flows very easily and if work roles are organized in an integrated manner, then your training function also has to be very integrated. So people should be given cross-training so that they are able to perform roles in various functions of the organization because it is an integrated organization. 
whereas if your organization is segregated highly segregated and structured according to the functions of your organization or according to the product line of the organization or according to the divisions of the organization and if it is very much separated then the training function will also have to be separated for all these separate units of the organization so the level of integration of your of your business units is going to influence how much your training function can be integrated for example if your finance department is organized in a very structured and in a very hierarchical manner and your marketing department is organized in a in a team then your training function cannot be integrated for both these departments because they are highly separated and they operate in very different ways another aspect that influences your training function is the level of global presence of your organization so for example if you are operating on a global level that means that you your organization will have employees from many different regions so if your organization is operating in north america in europe in asia in central asia in far east in australia all these different continents then the people of the countries in which your organization is operating will have different values will have different traditions will have different work ethics for example the japanese work, work ethic is very different from the western work ethic and that is again very different from the asian work ethic so how you will motivate and how you will monitor the performance of people and how you will motivate them to work for the business vision of your organization which has to be the same business vision all over that is going to affect your training and development function so it is possible that your training can either be organized in a centralized manner but with customizations for the local area so the content may be the same but your training is provided in various different languages that is possible if the training is related to some skills for example if you want people to learn how to use computer you only need to change the language or if you want to make people learn how to drive or how to operate a machinery that will only require you to translate the use of that machinery in the language that is the local language of a particular place but if you have to train your managers for leadership development that is a very cultural variable that is a very cultural concept so leadership is conducted in different ways in different cultures people are accepted for being good leaders differently in different cultures so your leadership training or your leadership development that has to be an amalgamation of the values of your own company and the values of the culture in which your subsidiary is operating so you cannot have a customer uh, you, you cannot have a uniform or a standardized program for leadership development all over your foreign subsidiaries then you also have to take care of cultural training of your employees who go and work in other countries so if employees from the parent company from the parent country go to work in a country where a subsidiary of that country is 
the, of that company is operating in another country where language is different, where culture is different, the employee who goes from the parent country to the subsidiary country has to be given an orientation, a cultural orientation about the culture and traditions of the country in which he or she is going. And then also support needs to be provided for that person's family to settle down over there. So you need to see that if that person has got children, what kind of schools they would be going to, how they will get acquainted with the culture, what kind of problems they may be facing and you have to prepare them, you have got to prepare their mind for that. You have got to tell them about various safety requirements that may be part of that uh, culture or, or, or environment. So all these things need to be told, they need to be communicated to the people who are going to work in the other countries. And then you also have to take care of the aspect that when these people, they come back, the repatriation process, that has to be streamlined as well. They need to be, they need to be adjusted back into the culture of, uh, of the parent, uh, parent country. So all these things, they, they influence what kind of training and how training will be organized in your organization if you have a global presence. What kind of global presence you have? In which countries are you, are you operating? At what scale are you operating? And finally, if you don't have a global presence, then that is going to affect your training function in that it can be more standardized and more uniformly delivered. So these were the various organizational characteristics that influence the training function. The most important of them is the human resource practice mix of the organization, which we are going to discuss in the next session. How your human resource practice mix affects the training function of your organization. So in this lecture, we have discussed the rest of the organizational characteristics that influence your training function, which is the roles that employees are supposed to play in your organization, the top management support, the integration of your business units, and the global presence of your organization. So we will conclude our session today. Until next time, we meet again 